I think uh, it always struck me that uh, it's difficult to get traction with the big questions. And it also struck me that it's essential to do that, you know, that, that um, uh, we, we are alive and it's important to get as close as we can to what it means to be alive. And then uh, if, you, uh, if you do find answers to those questions, then to bring them out in a way that makes sense and that can inspire others to contemplate the questions and bring out more meaning. Mm -hmm. And even as your work as a, as a mentalist, you yeah. work on the borders of what is possible. So that, that's yeah. probably been also a theme that, that, that has been um, uh, pushing you along, is trying to understand what is possible, what, is, what, is, what are yeah. humans, what are we capable of. Yeah, so in a way, you know, part of it is uh, there's a kind of tension in us between the known and the unknown. So curiosity pulls us towards what we don't know interest and curiosity and the spirit of discovery. But then we also have a sense of security that binds us to what we know. And I found that my performance is a tool, it can be a tool to kind of unseed that overconfidence in knowing mm -hmm. and, and, and to generate more curiosity. So it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a part of who I am that I can bring into even uh, the, the entertainment that I do. Because you know you seek deeper understanding, you seek uh, more uh, evolved thinking, and then it's important also, what does that mean to the world? What does it mean to life, to meaning, to the problems we face, et cetera? So you know, how, do, how can we apply that thinking? You have your work as a mentalist, and your work as um, an activist for cultural change and, and, your, and the Open Future Institute, do you see a thread that connects the two together? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, I guess somebody said, uh, there was a philanthropist who said you should tell people in your work you create mystery and in your life you pursue truth. So there is a, there is a uh, fine line between mystery and truth because, uh, and this tension I was saying about between knowing and not knowing, you have to be willing to embrace mystery or not knowing in order to discover more truth. If you just hold on to the ideas that you have, you know, and throughout history, people have revolutionaries, you know, thinkers, philosophers, scientists, etc., have been willing to go beyond what they already know in order to discover more. So the connection, I think, between the performance, I, I know I'm a mystery entertainer. As a mystery entertainer, I'm, I'm, I'm evoking this sense of not knowing, which in my life is very present and also keeps me interested in going beyond my own boundaries of what I understand. And mm -hmm. Right, and then it challenges I'm sure as, as a mentalist in doing that, you challenge people to under explore or realize there are terrains out there that, that are beyond yeah. what we fully comprehend. And hopefully inspire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes challenge also. But I mean, uh -huh. it's good to also be, I think uh, w what I found is that um, uh, there's always more than we imagine than, than we understand. And so, uh, in a way also, we all need to be challenged. I mean, I need to be challenged as well. If I'm not challenged, it, it's you, in a way, the more you're challenged, the more your boundaries can also, you know, kind of expand. You started an organization called the Open Future Institute. Uh, first, I'd like to ask you, what, a, what do you mean by that term, open future? It's 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 a it, it's kind of a way to convey the sense that the future is not predetermined and that it doesn't need to also be out of our hands you know in a w unfold by itself it, it it's it, it's uh, we've chosen the name because it conveys a sense that there are possibilities and it implies 
that we can have a role in shaping it as opposed to if the future was predetermined or if the future was completely out of our hands. So it's, it's more, uh, it's difficult to come up with a name for an organization, but it's a name that conveys that we have the potential to shape the future. Right, so the future is evolving. And so yes. And we, as you say, we have a role in yes. that in direction. Yeah, and it's because the future is evolving that it's open. Mm -hmm. If not, it would be just following whatever trajectories were yeah. in place, you know, but because it's evolving, that means it's open, that means more possibilities also are in, on yeah. are in the horizon. Yeah, do you think um, science embraces that idea r so readily of the f that the future is evolving? Well, I mean, at the level of biology, certainly. Yeah, so, so but let's say at the level of culture. Well, it's, I, I think that's a new horizon to look at values and worldviews and perspectives as evolving. I think um, the current progressive paradigm is that it's, it's subjective and relative, that different ways of thinking are subjective and relative, as opposed to seeing it as part of the evolutionary process, the development of ideas, of complexification of thought. So it, it hasn't been embraced but it's, it's partly because I think it's part of the new horizon. It's kind of a new frontier. And, and as we, uh, a, and it requires a, a way of thinking that's also more complex. You know, it's, we're so conditioned to see values and worldviews as static. You can point to the trajectory of history to show uh, that we're evolving. But the harder part, and some people won't agree with that, so, but you know, you can make a, and now you know you can gather uh, a logical progression. You can make a logical case. You know, if you have enough time to show the evolution of thinking, of values, that the way that what we accept, what we used to accept, is no longer acceptable. The kind of the the decrease, the extraordinary decrease of violence, etc. So you can make a case, but what's harder to to evoke is the sense, is not just that we have evolved, but that we are evolving. You see, that part is, because it's not something that, the, you know, you can look at something, how something has been created over time and gotten to a certain point, but because we can't imagine the future of where it's going to be, then it's hard, you know, it's a little bit harder to evoke that, that sense. At the level of technology, the environment, politics, et cetera, we know that the future is uncertain. Uh, it's, it's harder to, it's harder to uh, uh, contemplate that our values could evolve to, to ways that we don't yet know. What would you consider to be the mission of the Open Future Institute? It's to, uh, it's to support this understanding of the evolution of culture, of our values and worldviews, and to show its all important I applications, the way that it can uh, help address problems, some of the global challenges we face, and also the way that it can advance culture and society and institutions. The approach is going to be multiple. We're actually working with a new think tank called the Institute for Cultural Evolution. So it will have this think tank component but we won't be a think tank ourselves, but we'll work with the think tank closely to uh, incubate the ideas and to bring them out in their applications, particularly to global challenges. We'll support other uh, projects in different ways. And also, we want to play a role of bringing the ideas into public awareness. So we want to bring out the ideas, help develop the ideas, the thinking, the application, educate, and bring into public awareness. We have a three-part strategy. So the strategy of, of research and development, what we want to accomplish there is help bring out the application of cultural evolution to pressing problems and have impact. Show that we can also address some of our global challenges by evolving culture, by evolving thinking, worldviews, and values. So that's one area. Then we want to educate 
So uh, our education project, uh, our main education project is to engage uh, millions of students, university students globally in contemplating meaning from a developmental perspective. Usually we contemplate meaning as it's either already predetermined and fixed or it's relative and subjective. We want to show that it's developmental and in inspire people to consider meaning. That's our main education project. And then in terms of public awareness, we want to bring these ideas out. Our success will be proven by the ideas being applied in all kinds of ways by leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, so you hope to engage with leaders also then? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Political leaders, uh, social change leaders, business leaders, educational leaders. I think it's really important to work not to reject the existing paradigm, but to empower the existing uh, cultural systems that we have. So um, political leaders, for instance, are very polarized right now. So the Institute for Cultural Evolution is working on a plan to address polarization. Now, the ideas can be developed, but it's important for the political leaders to apply them. Because uh, I don't see that you're going to kind of create a revolution, upturn everything, put new political leaders in place, new institutions, new economic institutions, etc. We just, we need to build on, you know, what's already there, exists already there, and help it move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think also the reality is that a lot of political leaders are interested in moving things forward, even, but, but the, current, uh, the current system and way of organizing and way of dialoguing, etc., has inherent limits that, you know, um, so we need to inform it in order that it can evolve. Right. So, so evolve culture, evolve systems. Absolutely. Which are, which yeah. are yeah. subsets of culture. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And maybe the political leaders themselves are the ones who are going to be best poised mm -hmm. to evolve the systems, but they need to be informed by um, you know, a greater understanding of culture in order to evolve it. If we don't relate to our own worldview, our own perspective as fixed and final. And it, it creates enormous potential for evolution. What exactly do you mean by cultural evolution? Yeah, um, I mean the evolution of, our, of, of the... W w culture is, is a broad term. I mean, broad... Um, uh, I understand it that uh, there's an interior of culture, and then there's the exterior, which is the arts, music, uh, culture, um, social systems, uh, institutions, etc. But the interior of culture, which is what I'm referring to, is our values, our ways that we define meaning, that we define purpose, that we, uh, our identities, our ways of uh, understanding life and thinking, that is what can evolve. And that's what's extraordinary when you really realize that whatever you've come to, that there's another frontier in your own thinking, in your own perspective itself. Like the fundamental view that we have about life can evolve. I mean, that is, that's quite something. That's just amazing. And just to add one thing, that, that culture is the shared ways that we do that. So. It's not just that my you know, perspective can evolve or my thinking can evolve, but it is that our shared thinking mm -hmm. can evolve. So if you take, for instance, um, apply it in business, then you can go, well, in what ways can our values evolve? Not just make the good ones spread. You know, We could take the good values and spread them. But evolution means also it means that, but it also means that we even define values in new ways. You know, define what it means to do business in ways that we haven't defined before. Yeah. Like, like for instance, somebody saying that um, 
we will take the cost of a product to include the cost of the on the environment, for instance. That's an example of a, a new value being brought into the business yeah. sphere. Yeah. So, so cultural evolution then also is is the hope is that it leads us to a more sustainable future, um, right? Yes, of course. Are, are, see, are, yeah. are thinking at a higher level and realizing the costs of doing business includes yeah. culture, environment, yeah. uh, the, the fate of the planet, uh, health. Yeah, and it's interesting because you're not, uh, with, with evolution, you're inspired by greater possibilities. So the end goal is not sustainability, it's not peace, it's not some static you know, final thing, but those are very much included. You want a sustainable world, you want uh, the appropriateness of peace in the world, etc. but you're also inspired by greater possibilities, and uh, that's mysterious too. Within us, there is a sense of, there is a certain drive towards meaning, towards um, depth and towards um, creativity at, at the level of being a human being. You know, that, that there's something that calls us to take things forward. Uh, it's mysterious. You know, when I first experienced it in college, it was, it was very irrational. I just had this urge and, and I saw my friends going into, you know, knowing what life was about already and knowing what they were going to do. And it's, it's, a, it, it's kind of a quiet thing that, that's active within us. And um, at first it can seem like uh, it's not as clear and rational. But it is something that as we pursue we see is deeply meaningful. It's, it gives a reason, it, it, it explains why we're here. So, so I think that impulse towards, uh, it, whether it's towards making the world a better place or whether it's towards contributing to the development of society, to the evolution of culture, to the evolution of values, to the development of beauty or whatever it is, we need to follow that. And it, it's going to play itself out. It's going to call us in different ways, each in different ways. It's not a uniform thing that you just kind of follow this. But there, it is something that's active within us. It's a kind of also pulls us towards creativity. It pulls us to go to the next, push beyond the boundaries of what's already there mm -hmm. and create something new. When something pulls us or calls us, that also is, is connecting, engaging with the world, And would you say? Yeah, definitely. I think when something's uh, pulling us and en engaging our hearts and mind and our curiosity, I think that's, that's a big part of it. And we also, part of the evolution of culture is supporting that. Uh -huh. Supporting it in education, supporting it in business. Um, there's one, uh, one of my clients, um, they do, it's a small thing, but they're interested in the culture of the company and they have these meaningful speakers that they bring in once a month to give their employees you know fuel to really think about the deeper questions mm -hmm. so we need to bring that in you know we need to support that the ways we think influence the way we interpret life the way we interpret meaning the values that we hold and therefore uh, our relationship to life, others, and society. So the ways we think, you know, uh, have a huge relationship with the culture that we have. You know, the, um, there, there are ways that we think that aren't even conscious. You know, like for instance, uh, our current media conveys certain ways of thinking. It conveys certain ways of thinking about the role of a partner, of a spouse, the about romance, it conveys ways of thinking about life, about success, about happiness. There are all these kinds of ways of thinking. So it's it definitely has a big influence on the culture that we share. And the transformation of culture is gonna be also it's 
correlated to the, the ways that we think, you know, and the things that we value and, and what we care about. Yeah. And, and what would you, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges facing us at this point in time? Well, I mean, you have the obvious challenges of, I mean, climate change is obviously a very immediate uh, challenge. So you have certain, you know, kind of external challenges um, like climate change, uh, the growing gap between the rich and the poor, terrorism, you know, you have these external challenges so the, the ever the, that people speak about. Um, internally, you have, I think the greatest challenge is, well, wha is, is, is the ideologies of the past that have, that are entrenched and even pluralism the sense that uh, all values are equal is a challenge that we face because if if we adopt a view that different values have equal merit it's very difficult to see that values are evolving so that's also a big challenge that we face oh so that's a good point that that we have to move and and, and the concept of pluralism is a fairly recent Concept. Progressive, right? Yes. Very progressive, right. but but that's just like values evolve. That's not the end all and be all. We that's need right. To find work towards the the mystery or or, or where the next step is. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because even the most progressive ideas, if they're related to as the final answer, they become an obstacle to further development. Right. So you know. Uh, when religions came into being, it was an extraordinary development of values. I mean, it's um, we forget, you know, how much social order they created, right? But if we relate it to the ideas and the current interpretation at the time of the religions and don't allow them to move forward, it becomes a limitation to development. It didn't allow you know, if it, if it didn't make room for reason and science, it would prevent evolution. Now, some religions have evolved and made room for science, etc. And likewise, scientific thinking, if the level at which it was interpreted, if it stays at that same level, it prevents further evolution and further understanding that you can't completely separate the objective and the subjective, for instance. But so it, we, we do need to always not we, you know leave room for further evolution of our thinking even the most progressive ideas that we have yeah and, and in hindsight we can say that this has been the developmental tra trajectory we've been on from religious to scientific to pluralistic and in, in foresight do you have a sense of where that next evolutionary developmental trajectory may take us well um I can only say where I feel it's taking us now. Um, I, I feel that it's taking us to this view of that it's not static. So I think uh, that it's going to keep moving and expanding. Mm -hmm. But uh, how it will look like, I don't know. Yeah. What can an individual do on a singular level to effect change, positive change and transformation? Well, I think that's a tough question because that depends on the individual. Um, I think uh, I would say if I had to come up with something general that it comes back to what I was saying earlier is that we need to follow the mysterious impulse within us that's guiding us to break boundaries and keep pushing forward. You know, and not, and not accept the status quo within ourselves, not just the status quo of society, but our own status quo, is to keep, ins be inspired by what more is possible. The inspiration for what more is possible will call us to contribute in our own particular way. I think that as we embrace an evolutionary perspective on life, 
what that does to us is it, it disconnects us from our own biases and attachments. Because uh, in order to embrace what hasn't happened yet, I really mean what hasn't happened, not what you think should happen or will happen that you're going to make happen. But if you're embracing evolution, then you have to, uh, it, it creates a certain kind of openness and receptivity that makes it a lot easier to collaborate with others. And I think um, when people embrace that, then it makes it possible for higher culture to be created. Because higher culture is going to be created not through the s individual idea of one person, but through the uh, various perspectives and participation of different individuals. And um, so I think I, I see that, um, you know, like for instance, economically, if you organize a panel on the economy, you, you, you generally would have like each person presenting their point of view. But if you're interested in evolution, you'll take your point of view and you'll want to see how that fits into an overall perspective and how the other person's point of view contributes or doesn't. And then you'll be able to shape new structures because you're interested in what's going to be better. You're not interested in necessarily what's going to carry yours at the f you know, frontier of it. It may and it may not. But you want to see, you want your contribution to take its exact right place, not more and not less. And then if other people want their contribution also to take the right place, then you can figure out political solutions, e economic solutions, educational solutions that are uh, that are informed by the objectivity and intelligence of the people, you know, involved. I mean, that's a big, that's a big ideal. But I think we're starting to see some of that. There are people who want to just find out what the right place for their ideas are and work it out with others. But we don't yet have developed the structures where that kind of trust is there. Right, so a, as people develop the framework to see the world, not, a, not in, a, um, you know, in a diverse way, everyone thinks differently, sees different, but if they have that framework and that structure, they can kind of piece together pathways to create a more, well, open future, perhaps, or, or a, yeah. you know, a, a more positive future, you know, something where people are able to collaborate in a, in a more healthy, yeah evolved way. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, I think, you know, thinking that you fundamentally know versus knowing that there's more to uncover is going to affect the way you participate with others. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a radically different, you know, if you had, if your think tanks, for instance, were only selected by people who know that we have to uncover more and are not biased as to what, can you imagine the incredible mm -hmm. effectiveness of the think tanks, you yeah. know, if they were like that? I, and that shouldn't be too far away, you know, that shouldn't be too far away because there's a lot of good people in these different think tanks and positions and if they're supported to leave their own biases aside and not to feel like they have to battle for their positions, then I think something could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and science has always been about the search for truth and being willing to exactly. let go of your belief system. That's the beauty of science, yeah. Yeah, but we That's the true scientist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see that, but yeah. In the same way you could say that the religious man is also in the pursuit of truth as well, ideally. Right. You know, but that we off, that's not often the case. But uh -huh. Yeah, so you would say like a, the perfect, not perfect, but a person who embraces that kind of structured worldview is really a more integrated thinker. Would you, would you use that term, or is that? Or yeah, I think so. I mean, I think they, they're, they're not, their thinking allows for different dimensions. You know, one of the things I found interesting is that, uh, is to see that one, your own, one's own worldview 
is always limited and that different perspectives they're not equal necessarily but there can be an integration of different perspectives you know and certain times one perspective will have more weight and more accuracy and uh, so it's 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 a way to be able to hold different perspectives without just kind of saying oh well it's all the same or they're all uh, equally valid but to be able to understand the relationships between different perspectives right and they say a person who has a more evolved way of thinking can hold opposing thoughts in their mind yes and 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 find a way to synthesize and even contradictions right. yes and be able or paradoxes yeah, yeah life, sure life has many contradictions yes. we're all contradictory yeah. individuals that's right yeah yeah so Okay, so um, uh, Gerard, if people were interested in finding out more information about your work and the organizations you're involved in, how could they go about doing so? Well, if, uh, if, if they're interested in, um, in the evolution of culture in the way that I spoke about the, and the Institute, the uh, website is openfutureinstitute.org. Oh, okay. And, um, if they're interested in the, um, the 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 kind of leading edge, you know, kind of exploration of evolution as ourselves, uh, you know, in the in the spiritual sense, then um, I recommend um, AndrewCohen.org, oh, sure. and uh, I also uh, recommend. Uh, the work of Carter Phipps and his book Evolutionaries, as I mentioned, and also uh, Steve McIntosh has a great book called Evolution's, Purpo Evolution's Purpose, and of course the work of Ken Wilber as well as a philosopher, as one of the important philosophers of our time. And uh, I would also uh, recommend the word of Don Beck, who's done uh, some uh, groundbreaking work on understanding cultural stages of development and uh, how to respond to those stages in appropriate ways. Yeah, and, and that's great. And, and all these different uh, luminaries have, have ideas that um, kind of synthesize, leapfrog on each other, and each yes. one kind of helps build more understanding. Yes. And then the work you're doing, too, kind of keeps all evolving culture. Yeah, and I think part of the role of the Institute is to bring light to the different perspectives and endeavors and projects and ideas that are helping to shape this evolutionary perspective.